mic. Uh, just a second. Um, let me get used to this setup a little bit. Um, I'm more uh, familiar with the kind of uh, wearable mic. Um, so, so what is constructive mathematics and why it's important was the title which I um, provided when asked for, uh, for a title by the organizers. Um, and so I, I, I feel compelled to, um, to talk about it. On the other hand, yesterday I had a um, small group session and uh, during the session it was uh, kind of becoming more and more clear to me that uh, there were very few mathematicians around here. And uh, uh, <laughs> the question may, may seem a little esoteric and um, um, probably just um, kind of um, meaningless to, uh, to most. So I'll, um, I'll try to explain uh, in this half an hour uh, not why uh, constructive mathematics is important to you, uh, but uh, rather why constructive mathematics and the issues surrounding constructive mathematics, which is um, even more relevant, are, are important to uh, mathematicians, to mathematicians, to um, philosophers of mathematics. And maybe, maybe you'll, maybe you'll uh, um, find it uh, important too, and, and then it will become important to you, uh, even without clearly understanding what is it about. But, but then, after, uh, after feeling that it's important, you can, uh, it, it, you can spend some time and learn uh, what it is in, in more uh, detail. So, so when we uh, say constructive mathematics, we should first make clear what we mean by the word mathematics in this phrase. Uh, so I'm by training and by, and by most of my life experience, a pure mathematician. Uh, that's, um, that's how we are called. Uh, so for me, mathematics means to invent uh, or to learn mathematical constructions and then to use them to prove theorems that answer questions that have been posed by other uh, M most often are more senior uh, mathematicians. So it's, uh, it's a kind of uh, self-perpetuating uh, activity um, where, um, where we build on um, uh, what our predecessors have built. Um, so, there is one kind of side, uh, side road uh, which one can take uh, from uh, starting from this proposition, uh, starting, excuse me, from, from this uh, sentence, uh, which is uh, the importance of correctness in mathematics. Because since we're building on the previous, on what the previous generation has uh, has built. It's very important that what what they have built uh, is actually uh, correct, uh, because uh, otherwise, uh, if kind of three generations ago, uh, someone uh, someone discovers a mistake in, in something which has been done three generations ago, then so much already has been built upon it that uh, it would lead uh, to, a, to a very big crash. And uh, I, we, we haven't so far observed uh, crashes of, of such proportion, but uh, smaller crashes uh, I have observed. And uh, I, should, uh, I should say that uh, I have actually observed um, 
good people and good mathematicians becoming uh, uh, very much destroyed by uh, by um, by the consequences of uh, of a mistake which has been done by uh, by the previous uh, generation uh, because they have built upon it and, and they have advertised what they have built and, and that was supposed to be a solution to a famous conjecture and, and so the person was going to various uh, forums and, and reporting on, uh, on the solution of this conjecture until uh, some people found um, something strange in, in, in what he was saying and <coughs> uh, Eventually, he was uh, made to look into the proof of the result, which was published in a refereed journal, which he referred to. And that proof turned out to be nonsense. And so all of all, all his construction uh, fell, um, fell down. And uh, he is a friend of mine, so it's, uh, it's no joke to me. Uh, and um, that happened like, Ten years ago, and, and he still cannot uh, cannot get uh, himself back into um, into kind of normal um, distance. So, so, so the correctness is extremely important, and um, that's. <laughs> That's the road from, from which I came to, uh, to the questions uh, such, that, uh, such as why are constructive mathematics is important. So I, I came from that side. Uh, but we'll go in a different direction uh, today. So, so let's go back to, to the question of what mathematics is. And um, mathematics, uh, for me, consists of definitions and constructions uh, assertions or statements about these constructions, about these objects which have been defined, uh, and proofs of these assertions. So, kind of a summary of, um, of what I mean here by, by the word mathematics. Um, so there is no real distinction between constructive and non-constructive assertions. <coughs> I mean, every non-constructive assertion may be reformulated in such a way as to make it constructive. Um, so the difference, uh, uh, the serious difference, appears um, at, uh, only for <coughs> constructions and proofs. It's a little funny to talk about constructive and non-constructive constructions, but uh, that's unfortunate <laughs> uh, <laughs> consequence of, uh, of this word not being used so much in mathematics, and, 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 and so we don't have many synonyms for it. Um, so, by the way, non-constructive is usually called classical, and uh, I will use this terminology as well. So one usually talks about classical mathematics and constructive mathematics, uh, as, um, as if all classical mathematics was non-constructive, which is entirely not the case. So, Before we approach the question about the importance of constructive mathematics, that is the importance of doing constructions and proofs uh, in a certain way, uh, we may ask, uh, since the audience consists mostly of non-mathematicians, what is the importance of, of uh, doing these constructions and proofs in general? Suppose we have a proof that the square root of two is not a rational number. <coughs> what is the importance of this proof? Uh, in fact, it turns out that mathematics somehow touches the very, some very deep 
um, deep feelings and, and, and deep um, kind of strings of, of, of human mind, of, of human uh, motivation and, and behavior in a sense. Um, so that is a bit of a joke, but uh, the legend says that uh, Pythagoreans um, threw out uh, uh, of a ship uh, one, of, uh, one of their own uh, because he disclosed that uh, the proof which they discovered that, that the square root of two is not rational. So for them, uh, they, uh, they were thinking in terms of geometry all the time. So for, for them, uh, uh, the idea was that there is a, uh, let, let's pick a measure. Kind of, let, let's pick a unit of lengths. Uh, then let's, let's measure everything in, in this unit of lengths. Uh, then there will be certain things which, uh, if you want to count, then you will have uh, a whole number of this, uh, of this units of lengths. Uh, if you want to do music, for example, where, where the ratios uh, are important, uh, then you'll have ratios between uh, the whole numbers of this um, uh, of this unit. Uh, so uh, they they were thinking that everything is representable by these ratios, uh, like everything in the world. That the world can be entirely described somehow by uh, by the ratios of uh, of whole numbers. Uh, and I. Uh, Then they, they looked at, at a very uh, uh, simple uh, problem, that consider a square with, uh, 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 whose side is, um, is this uh, unit length, and consider the diagonal of this square. So how to express this diagonal as a ratio of, um, of, of whole numbers of, um, of, of this unit length? And they started trying to do it, and they came up with a proof that it's impossible. And that was kind of, that, that, sh that shook their whole philosophy of, uh, of the world uh, in, in, in a, a tremendous way. And, uh, and they, uh, they made this proof secret uh, because they, uh, so they, they, they consider it to be kind of a very high level of um, kind of mystical religious um, knowledge, uh, which uh, should only be accessible to uh, to to a few, uh, because if, if, it, if everybody knew about it, then 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 the, the whole world would fall apart because it's it's based on the belief that everything is expressible in ratios, uh, and so that's. Uh, that's why this, uh, this person who, whose name I unfortunately don't remember was apparently just thrown out of, of a ship. So, um, now this, so Pythagoreans believed that mm, the world can be described by ratios of, uh, of uh, whole numbers. Uh, then they discovered that there are irrational numbers, uh, but uh, still Greeks after Pythagoreans uh, had this, uh, this wonderful uh, geometry and um, also three-dimensional geometry and they also had some mm, theories for uh, predicting astronomical events, which were also based on mathematics uh, and on um, a combination of geometry with, um, with some rules of, of, uh, of circular motion. Um, uh, which also related to music. So, so they had this, this very uh, rich uh, mathematical uh, 
description of the world. So if, if, I, if you want, they, they had physics, they had astrophysics, and uh, it was all uh, in terms of mathematics, and, and it was all very, uh, very intricate. So then, of course, uh, there was uh, a bit of a problem with um, the appearance of uh, Christianity and the fall of Rome, and uh, a lot of this uh, knowledge became um, somehow associated with, uh, with the old beliefs, and, and so, uh, it, so it, it became heretical and um, was um, to some extent destroyed. But, but, uh, but, but a lot of it remained. And, um, and then when uh, uh, mathematics started to grow again, uh, it, it always grew together with physics. Uh, and there was always this dream. I even remember having this, this feeling inside me kind of myself when I was um, about your age, actually earlier, um, about high school age, when I was uh, learning physics and mathematics um, and chemistry and whatever not. Um, so um, I had this feeling that, that the most wonderful thing one could do in physics would be to, uh, to, to understand, for example, where all the fundamental constants come from. So to, to build such a theory, such a mathematical model, uh, which would explain um, all of the uh, numbers which appear uh, in, uh, all of the fundamental numbers which appear in physics, and, and, and somehow to, to create a, a real mathematical, uh, ma a real mathematical physics, which would be kind of build up from, from axioms and, and from, from definitions. And, uh, and, and then it would reach uh, the level where it can explain the reality. And um, this, um, I, I had no idea about Pythagoreans at that, that time. The one thing which I wasn't learning is, uh, was history. Uh, because I was uh, studying in the Soviet Union and uh, history was so messed up. Uh, at that time, that <laughs> that I um, I just felt that there is something wrong with it, and so I never actually uh, spent much time with it. I, I'm spending time with it now, uh, now that I can access things which are um, which are not messed up, and, and it's it's very interesting. Um, so um, so this belief that 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 the world can be built. <laughs> From, from the mathematics is, is the first thing from, from which everything else can be deduced. Uh, this, uh, this belief remains, and, 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 or at least this hope, and, and this um, interest of doing it. And, 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 and one of the absolutely great examples is string theory. So string theory is, is precisely this kind of thing. I mean, they, they, they tried to, um, to build such a model, and, and, and the problem currently, as far as, uh, as far as I understand with string theory, is that they, they have uh, showed that uh, they can build not only one model, but, but actually very many models. Uh, uh, I mean, it's kind of models of many, many, many different worlds. Uh, in the world with different physics. And uh, since nobody uh, can observe these worlds, uh, it, it, it looks like there is something wrong there because we want to have a mathematical uh, kind of core <coughs> from which only, only our reality can grow. Uh, so that like it would explain, for example, why the space is three-dimensional. Uh, and, and, and other things like that. But, but string theory is, is certainly um, an attempt to, um, another very um, rich and interesting attempt to um, reduce um, 
everything to Massimo. So, so I, from here grows the extreme importance of mathematics as um, as something which is kind of the ultimate reality, and then our reality is is, is built on it. But but mathematics should be. One and and only one, uh, because if we, uh, if we if we can build several theories, that's the trouble of string theory. That's why they're not taken as seriously as they would be otherwise. Uh, but at least they assume one mathematics. Now, if we uh, come and tell and and say that look, guys, there is actually. A Things are even more interesting because it's it's that we actually have several different mathematics, and uh, which one of them is the ultimate reality uh, uh, behind our world? Uh, nobody knows. So that's that's we can go back. That's where we uh, can go back now to uh, to the question about. Um, constructive and non-constructive mathematics. So different methods of proof and construction that are permitted by classical and constructive mathematics lead to different mathematical realities. And the question arises, which one is the ultimate one behind our world? And uh, what basically happens is that uh, in constructive mathematics, uh, things become well. Certain things, things become more uh, more complex. Uh, we know that there are theorems uh, which uh, which can be proved in classical mathematics, and which uh, cannot be proved in uh, constructive mathematics. I, I, using this kind of more restricted methods uh, uh, of constructive mathematics. And uh, because the theorems cannot prove, some of the theorems may um, actually state that two uh, different um, definitions, for example, uh, lead to uh, equivalent uh, objects. So that would be a typical theorem in, in, in uh, modern mathematics. When we op quite often, um, a lot of work is um, about proving that two uh, different concepts um, are actually equivalent. So they will be equivalent in, uh, in classical mathematics, but in constructive mathematics, they will not be equivalent. And not only they will not be equivalent, but uh, <laughs> no, 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 not only the kind of two, two concepts which, uh, um, which we are kind of under suspicion in classical case, but, but, but some concepts which in classical case are, are obviously uh, uh, one concept, uh, they are branch in constructive mathematics and become several concepts uh, with, uh, with different uh, behavior. So, so the reality of constructive mathematics is much more complex than the reality of classical mathematics. And uh, if one uses uh, sufficiently um, strong um, uh, system, uh, formal system for constructive mathematics, there are also different formal systems. Uh, so if you can quantify over things like propositions, then you can uh, impose some of the axioms which are missing in constructive <coughs> mathematics. You can impose them later, and, and then you can uh, embed classical mathematics into the constructive mathematics. So without uh, explaining it uh, in too much detail, uh, I can say that in the um, that, that classical mathematics uh, appears as a subset of constructive mathematics. So uh, it's, uh, it's a very interesting, very special subset 
uh, which is also, um, you, you can also kind of collapse all of the constructive mathematics onto the classical mathematics. So, so on the one hand, you can embed classical into constructive. On the other hand, you can collapse constructive onto the classical. And uh, by such collapse, you often can simplify things. And so if you, if you want to prove something, it might make sense to uh, uh, first uh, consider its uh, um, classical version, and only then uh, consider this more complex constructive version. But uh, this is what we see now. And uh, this question of the reality of constructive mathematics, so let's put it this way. I mean, the reality of classical mathematics is, is such a uh, widely accepted thing. Uh, it, it's, it's a very standard question. Uh, do you believe that mathematics is discovered or invented? And uh, there, there is a big percent of, a uh, large percent of, of people who believe that it's uh, discovered, so that it actually has some existence uh, independent on, uh, on humans. So uh, is the same true about constructive mathematics? We who, who do constructive mathematics, I mean, I, I, I grew up as a classical mathematician, and only during the last 10 years I learned uh, constructive mathematics and started working with it. Uh, I see no reason to believe that it has any, uh, any less uh, reality in it than, uh, than classical mathematics. So, uh, <laughs> So we don't, uh, we don't, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a philosopher. Uh, I'm a mathematician. I actually prove things. I mean, uh, <laughs> so, uh, but uh, for philosophers, it's, uh, it's an interesting problem, and, and, and now, because of the connection between constructive mathematics and computer verification of proofs, which is that road which we discussed uh, uh, some time ago, which, uh, which goes towards the need to, um, to make sure that, that, what, that what we build on is correct. And the only way of doing it is, um, is to um, <coughs> Device somehow some ways of uh, using computers for verification of proofs, not for proving, but for verification of proofs. Uh, and um, it turns out that when one starts doing it, one uh, it, it's it's much more convenient for a computer to verify constructive proof uh, than than uh, a, a classical proof. It's it's. It, uh, <laughs> There probably would, would be no reason for it, but, uh, but it is so. I mean, it can also verify classical, but it just kind of takes more time. Um, so, uh, so constructive mathematics becomes much uh, more uh, visible, I would say, because people who were doing it were kind of somewhere in the margins. Now it becomes more visible because of this connection with computer proof verification. And so the questions to the philosophers whether it uh, represents some kind of a little, uh, some kind of different ultimate reality, or it's actually the correct ultimate reality, and uh, the ultimate reality of classical mathematics is just a little part of it. So this, uh, this becomes uh, very, um, very uh, relevant, and, and uh, philosophers do uh, um, did start to uh, to talk about it. So, uh, so this is uh, um, I think I have 44 seconds left. Uh, so, uh, thank you very much. This will be the end of my talk, and uh, I don't know what uh, what should uh, follow. 
uh, we'll, uh, we'll see eventually. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.